Today we're going to be reviewing and installing a smart lithium battery from Anti-Gravity. My Audi S4 has a stock OEM battery and it's become weak. The car's been throwing occasional warnings. Because the car is heavily modified, I've thought about a lithium solution to reduce weight and our friends at Anti-Gravity came through. Anti-Gravity makes a wide range of lithium batteries for cars, motorcycles, and racing applications. These aren't just basic batteries. Anti-Gravity automotive batteries are smart with integrated wireless jump starting, a battery management system to ensure long life, and they directly replace OEM batteries. The remote jump start feature is really cool. You get two of these little remotes and by pressing the button that activates a reserve power capacity that lets you start your car if your batteries run flat. There is also a button on the battery itself that does the same thing, but on some cars, getting to the battery can be hard, especially with a flat battery, so remote is a handy option. I'm gonna keep one in the car and one in the garage. There are a lot of S4 B9 owners that have been looking for ways to save weight on their heavily modified cars. People are removing seats, they're removing spare tires, and gutting interiors to get some weight off the car to get the perfect quarter mile times, zero to 60 times, even track times. And the battery is a really great way to shave some serious weight. The installation is supposed to be as simple as a standard battery swap. However, these cars are pretty sophisticated and you do need to do some adaptation coding to tell the car it has a new battery. That's the case with any battery you're gonna put in there, even another OEM one. Now let's get started with the installation. First, we gotta pop the trunk. If you have any junk in here, go ahead and pull it out. You can lift the little handle down here and you have two options. You can either hang it or you could just pull the entire thing out, which is what I'm gonna do. A lot of you probably already know this, but there is a toolkit area in the back there. Sometimes people just lift it and think the front area is all there is. You probably have a spare tire in here. Go ahead and pull it out. I have a little patch kit and a small compressor in here instead of a spare. I will throw a donut in there if I was gonna go on like a long trip. We got two bolts in the back and two bolts around the front that we need to pop off to get this off our battery. We'll take a 13 mil socket and blast these off. This piece now just pops right off. Now we can take the negative terminal off and it's gonna require that infamous 10 millimeter that we all love to lose and holy crap, mine is just finger tight. That should just come out. Let's look at the positive terminal. Looks like it might be the same 10 millimeter. Sure is, that one's actually on tight. There we go. I thought the battery was free, but we need to get that last bolt. The battery, I think, is free now. You can unplug this little gas vent hose. It's time for the weigh-in. First, let's look at the stock battery. Looks like we got 50 pounds and 6.6 .6 ounces. Now let's check out the anti-gravity battery. Looks like 17 pounds and 12 ounces. So we've got over 30 pounds of weight savings. You can throw the battery in here. You can clamp the battery down so it doesn't move around. You can kind of line it up with the marks. You can pull the red cap off and get your positive terminal on there. You don't need a ton of torque, you just need it to not spin around and not go anywhere. Get your negative terminal on, there might be a little spark. And again, not a lot of torque. You can pop this little cap back on. And then this thing, you don't really have a place to put this back anywhere, you can just sort of leave it. With the battery connected, I'm just gonna use my remote to make sure the car still works, and it does. Take this mounting bracket and pop it back in. Start all your fasteners. If you've got your donut and all that other stuff, throw it in here. I'm gonna throw my compressor in here, my little toolkit. Throw the carpeting back in, it's super easy. That's it. When installing a battery into a car such as this B9S4 with its own battery management system, it's generally a good idea to let the car know that you've switched out the battery. Even if you're going like for like with the same size and manufacturer battery, the car should know that the battery's new by changing the serial number, so it doesn't treat it like an old battery. I will show you how to do that with the Rostec VCDS software and the dongle that I've already plugged into the car's OBD2 port. Let's fire up VCDS. And you could use other tools. There are handheld diagnostic tools that can do this. 
There are popular dongles such as the OBD11 dongle and phone app. However, I don't personally like OBD11 anymore. They never really got their iPhone app working well, and now they've paywalled most of the good features behind our recurring subscription license, including the ability to do this. I will link to VCDS down in the description in case you're not familiar with Rostec. It is such a great tool. It does absolutely everything. It's incredibly powerful. And the best part is it comes with a set amount of VINs when you buy it. It is pretty affordable. And then the cool part is, unless you have so many cars that you run out of VIN numbers, you don't have any other costs. So to get started in VCDS, we're gonna click select control module option up in the top left corner. And now we're gonna be presented with all of our modules. In this case, we'll be looking at module number 19, the CAN gateway. In the CAN gateway, it's gonna load everything up and show us kinda what options we have in here. And we really just wanna go to adaptations, which is option number 10 here. And here you have various settings on the computer that could be changed. You wanna scroll down until you see this rated battery capacity option. And the stock battery was 75 amp hour. I opted for a slightly smaller one. I don't really need the car idling a lot with all its electronics running. 60 amp hour should be plenty. And once we put in the 60, we just hit do it. It'll ask you replace 75 with 60. You're gonna say yes. And it says controller accepted the request. We now read the channel again. And it says 60 amp hour. Awesome, the car now knows we have a 60 amp hour battery in there. Now scroll down to manufacturer. I'll just call it AGB for anti-gravity batteries. We're gonna hit do it. Do we wanna switch JCB to AGB? Yes. Controller accepted the request. Now we select battery serial number and we just wanna change this to something. I didn't actually pick up the real serial number of this battery. I think we could do something like a date. So we could say 2023, April, today's the 15th, and then we'll do like 15, 40 for the time. So now we know that we swapped the battery 2023, 04.15 at 3.40 p.m. Now we can give the car a start to make sure it's still working right. Perfect. With the install out of the way, let me give you my final thoughts and a review of the anti-gravity lithium battery. The installation itself is the same as any other battery you're gonna swap in, except it's easier because the battery is so light. As you saw, the stock battery is very heavy and this lithium option is much lighter. Obviously, it is a pricey battery compared to a lead acid option. However, for those of you out there spending thousands or tens of thousands of dollars modifying your car, it's not a ton of money and the weight savings is really there. Furthermore, you're not having to necessarily remove the seats out of your luxury sedan to be able to find those same pounds. Some of you may be thinking, well, why don't you just use carbon fiber for some of the body panels? And that has been a very popular way to shed weight and add aesthetic looks to your vehicle. However, you'd be amazed at how much carbon fiber you have to buy to get some of the same weight savings. Furthermore, there's a difference between wet and dry carbon fiber. A lot of people don't realize this, but most cheaper carbon fiber products are wet carbon fiber. Wet carbon fiber is not much lighter than stock parts. In some cases, it can be heavier than stock parts, especially on modern vehicles that already use composites and aluminum. Dry carbon fiber is an option, and it is significantly lighter than wet carbon fiber. However, it is also more expensive. You might spend thousands or tens of thousands of dollars to replicate the same weight savings, depending on the make and model of your car and what has to get replaced. Furthermore, most manufacturers do not supply UV protection on dry carbon fiber, which means you need to spray it with clear coat in order for it to last and look good for years to come. I also really like that anti-gravity makes these batteries smart. By having that battery management system integrated in the battery, it allows this lithium technology to be used through a wide variety of cars that don't necessarily support lithium out of the factory. The BMS also features protection for overcharge, over discharge, and short circuits. These are great safety features and the BMS also extends the life of the battery. One of these batteries should last seven to nine years if it's well maintained. I also think the remote jumpstart feature is a very neat aspect to these batteries. No one likes being stranded with a dead battery, having to find jumper cables, hoping somebody can help you, calling a friend, 
all that stuff really sucks. Being able to hit a button and get another start out of your car is huge, especially if maybe it's not your daily and you forget to plug it in at some point. This can be a real game changer for those situations. Now, I am told you're not supposed to rely on that feature constantly, meaning if you do leave, you should put the car on tender. And this is another aspect that we should talk about. These batteries require a specific type of tender. You can't just use a regular lead acid charger to keep these going. The tender that you use to charge the battery needs to support lithium iron phosphate batteries. That's a very key aspect to this, and I will link a supported tender down below in the description. Using an approved tender is a great way to make sure the battery is not ruined by being charged incorrectly over a period of time. I also really like that this is a true direct replacement. We didn't have to rig anything up. The battery just slots right in like any other OEM battery, and you're off to the races. You might not drive an S4, maybe you're watching this video to learn about the anti-gravity technology. Anti-gravity has you covered. They support a wide range of makes and models from Lamborghini to BMW, Porsche, and many others. I've had the battery in my car for about a week now, and my family's been in town over that period. We've driven all over town, many starts and stops, many tanks of gas. And one of the things I noticed that I really like about this battery is just how much cranking power you get. Compared to the lead acid that I had, even before it started to wear down, this just turns over so quickly when you hit that power button. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did remember to click the subscribe button hit like and leave me a comment i really love talking to all of you if you're new to the channel i do a lot of detailing videos including really nerdy testing of products as well as a lot of car mods and other car related content there's something here for any car person i really hope to see you again in a future video